welcome back to my channel. Yes, I am wearing the same sweatshirt. It is still cold outside and it's winter and I like this sweatshirt. I like the color, I like the feel. So I guess just get used to seeing me in this this winter for the most part. <laughs> when the weather warms up, you'll start to see more of a variety of what I'm wearing again. But until then, I'm going to be comfortable. But my name is Rachel, that is the R and the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. Welcome back. And this is my week seven wrap up. Seems so weird to be saying week seven, since I'm very good at starting projects and not always about finishing them. I, I'm giving myself a pat on the back for doing this type of wrap up seven weeks in a row. And it's been a fun week. So last weekend, I did finish Abaddon's Gate. I have since returned it to the library, so here's your picture. <laughs> and I have mixed feelings about this one. I think this has been my least favorite so far, but there are still enough interesting details in it that I do want to continue with the overall series. So in the first book, Leviathan Wakes, it follows a dual POV. You get Holden and Miller, and then it makes sense that you don't have Miller in book two. And so they had to introduce other points of view. And then when they came to book three, they introduced other points of view, and then all you get is Holden. And honestly, I was disappointed. There were some really great characters built in book two that I wanted to see more of. And I will be honest, I kind of bounced off of the beginning of Abaddon's Gate for that reason, because I'm being introduced to new characters and I just didn't see the point in their stories. And yes, the authors did have everything work its way around and combine at the end. I think they could still have had this story and done it a little bit differently with giving us at least one of the perspectives from, at, or at least giving us one other perspective from book two. That way it wasn't just a whole big dump of all these new characters and now you get Holden. So the universe has expanded and yes, I am interested in continuing forward but not rushing to pick up the next book. When it comes in, it comes in. Then I read Those Not So Sweet Boys by Yoko Nogiri. By Yoko Nogiri. And this is a fun, like, teenage manga of a young woman who is tasked with bringing these three young men to, back to school and the relationships that she is forming with them. And it, I like this type of manga. It's just light and it's fun. And it's not like they don't, these characters don't have their own issues, but in a way it's also kind of nostalgic for the high school life without the typical YA angst and drama. I don't know. For some reason my, my mind likes YA manga, even when it doesn't always like YA fiction. I'm weird, what can we say? I am going to be continuing on with this. I am curious to see how their relationships develop. And then, by the skin of my teeth, on Friday, I finished The Serpent Shadow by Mercedes Lackey. This is, it. so I thought this was number two in the element, in her Elemental Master series, but apparently this is number one, and the other book I had read, Fire Rose, is more of a prequel kind of thing. I don't know. But this is an interesting series as it's taking fairy tales, setting it in kind of a historical alternate history uh, setting because then there's magic. And this is set in Victoria, England. I would say the early 1900s just from the context of the things that are happening. The main character Maya is half British and half Indian. And she is escaping India because magic is at foot and has killed her mother and father. And so she's gone back, or so she has gone to England for the first time. She's never been there before. 
in order to escape this magic. This was a very fun series, and I guessed right on what this fairy tale was. But I really like how it played out. I like that Maya was a person in her own right. And even when we were introduced to the love interest, he had no interest in taking away her choices. In fact, one of her conflicts in the book, he has an idea of how to help her, but he wants her to have that same idea. And so he really is like, well, think about it. What would you do? Like, how, how would you do this logically? And not, not in an insulting way. He already knows her to be a very logical and organized person. It was so much fun. I, I just really like Mercedes Lackey's writing. This isn't the first series I've read by her. I wouldn't say she's an autobi author, but definitely if you get, if she's an author that you suggest to me, I know that she's someone that I would like to read. So I really enjoyed this, and if you like fairy tale historical twists, you should pick this up as well. And I just said that I finished The Serpent's Shadow last night on Friday night. I didn't. That was actually Thursday night, because on Friday night, I finally picked up Forging a Nightmare by Patricia A. Jackson. And I was right. This is a paranormal uh, urban setting where I didn't know kind of how the it was working, but already can tell I'm only a little bit in, so what I'm going to say is not really spoilers, but... It is like angels and demons and the apocalypse is kind of the setting of this book. But the main characters are all African Americans or black. Yeah, it's a very interesting series so far. I'm intrigued and I plan to continue to read this this week. Now, if I finish that, because it's a longer book and... The longer books seem to actually be taking me a full week. If I finish that, I am also interested in reading Prosper's Demon by K.J. Parker. I've heard a lot of good things about this. I'm not typically a horror, a horror fan, but again, I've heard just some really great things about this one and, the, uh, and its sequel, so I'm interested in reading it. And then after that, I'm feeling like a sci-fi needs to be coming up, and I think I'm ready to finish Torin Kerr's series. So this is the last in the Peacekeeper trilogy and the last Torin Kerr book that I am aware of. I probably will end up picking this up. If not, you know, it might be just at the very end of the week. I don't know, but yeah. So for my writing wrap-up, I myself have not written anything, however, I was given the opportunity to beta read another story. I've only done the first two chapters so far, but I'm having so much fun. And I feel like it's appropriate to talk about that this here. I'm not telling you the plot because that it's not my story. I'm not going to do that. But what I'm learning from this process is I'm seeing things that I do in my writing and it's helping me to be more aware so I know once I go back to writing I'll be like, oh, hey, yeah avoid this or oh hey continue to do this because you like reading it and being able to look at writing objectively and to say I like this I like this or hey I'm confused on this wording it honestly it's given me one of my favorite parts of the whole writing process is the editing and so getting to beta read someone else I'm not actually editing their work but it's a lot of fun and it's kind of showing me things that I can be more aware of in my own writing when I am editing. So I'm really enjoying that process. And anybody who's a writer, if you write science fiction and fantasy, those are the genres I primarily read, and I'm willing to beta read any of those. I mean, I'd probably be willing to, well, probably, I mean, I be willing to read other things as well, except horror, because I'm I don't know enough about horror to do that. But the genres that I really read a lot of are the science fiction fantasy. So if you're wanting to make sure that your book is something that a science fiction or fantasy reader is going to want to read, that's why I'd be good as a beta reader. So hit me up. My email is in my about page. So hey. And then for my other media, 
with uh, reading Abaddon's Gate, I finished a longer reading project and was sitting down to start editing that and realized my computer did not have enough room. And so trying to figure out how to make more room on my computer brought me back up to an old project that I have on it. I don't know if anybody else has had this happen to them where you're studying something or you're involved in something and your parents go, oh, hey, this other thing over here, you'll get to use those skills that you're working on. And they kind of cajole you into doing it, even though you don't want to actually do it. Yeah, that's what this kind of project was. My parents are professional storytellers and they basically cajoled me into filming one of their events they do yearly and then they helped me um, do interviews with the some storytellers and because it wasn't something I was very excited about and this is really horrible of me it has taken me years to get things done but this past fall I finished the first segment of the interview process where it's talking about the importance of story and I'll actually link their website down below because that video is on there. I am proud of it but I still have like the other interviews and then the act we filmed the two days worth of stories and so I'm going through and what we're currently work wanting is to divide out by person so their interview and if they told stories or if they just told stories that way it, it's just it's by person so depending on, on other projects that we might want to use this footage for it's a little bit easier to identify people so that is what I'm doing is I have been watching storytelling so that has been the media I've been consuming and it just reminds me of how, how my dad got into storytelling because he was the first one who did it Maybe because his interview and the story, one story I've seen him tell so far, both talk about that process. So yeah, it's been a kind of a fun memory trip. And then also hopefully those will be done this weekend and then I will have more room on my computer so I can finish my bigger project and get it uploaded next week. That is the hope and the goal for this. As I've been listening to the stories, it's a lot of just sitting there because I'm not editing anything. I'm listening to it and breaking it so into a smaller chunk so it goes with the right person. I picked up a cross stitch that I've been working on for years. I'm at to the outlining phase and I, I'll take a picture and post it here. But that's something that I enjoy doing is I find I'm a seasonal crafter and I go from, depending on the season is, I will is what I will pick up and I'm in the mood to cross stitch again, but for that I need to have things to listen to versus be actively doing something. So this is where I might pick up a, an audiobook in order to cross stitch as well, but we shall see. How did your week seven go? Did you read anything that you are really loving or is there, have you read something where you're like, oh no, I did not like this? Let me know down below. Thank you and have a great day.